Okay, so I decided to split a more detailed uh, tests for PvE and PvP into two different videos because for PvE I am able to provide it a bit faster since uh, Brawl Arena is currently locked for like another four to five hours for me. So yeah, uh, hopefully this helps you decide whether Perna is worth it if you are mostly focused on PvE. And uh, here are how I tested the unit. So first of all, let's jump into the game, just so I could explain for you. So what we're going to be testing is a Perna, Max Awaken, Max Killed, all of that, so connected to Nanenthal, who is also Max Killed, Max Awakened, all of that. So uh, there will be some variations, like since these are different types, different books, all of that, it's not really possible to make it exactly right, but yeah. Uh, for Nadin Ha, there is a single level of book higher than Perna, so she gets 270 attack and 13 crit damage, whereas Perna gets 261 attack and 20.8 crit damage, so that's like what? Probably like 1% difference, that's pretty much nothing, right? Then uh, the difference will be artifacts. For runes, they're gonna be the same. Uh, the set that I used is this, so on Nadin Ha, this is what the set looks like 7.2k attack. 98 crit, 333 crit damage, and if we put that set on a Perna, uh, this is what it would look like. So she would have 7000 attack, 88 critical rate, I mean, we're only testing critical hits, so we can imagine that this is 100, but yeah, uh, 317 crit damage, and for artifacts, uh, this is what I use, so Perna has pretty much the only good artifact for bosses, which is Subjugation, and it will do 10% more damage to bosses. Now, Mages, uh, believe it or not, Mages have a way, way better artifact. Actually, both of the blue artifacts are way better for Mages than they are for Archers when it comes to doing damage to PvE. So, uh, one of them is being able to do 15% more damage to, CC, uh, to enemies with CC effects. The cool thing is, you can apply a CC effect to a boss, as you can see this is a boss creature and I am able to apply Provoke, which is a CC effect, which would increase uh, Nadin Ha's damage way more, so in a short amount of burst you are able to do more damage, but over uh, the duration of the fight it will sort of equal out and be similar to what the Archers would get from the 10% boost here. But to make it even more equal, uh, here's what I did, so instead of testing with a 15% damage boost, I will be testing it with a level 1, so if I put this on, uh, this is pretty much uh, the artifact I used, it will have a little bit lower attack, uh, because a powered up artifact has one yeah 119, uh, level 1 has 48, but uh, the artifact skill effect will only do 10% more damage, which is actually exactly the same amount of damage boost you get uh, as the Archer artifact for bosses, right? So that's the most equal comparison. And also, later on, I will test it with the artifact that you should actually be using, which is the Witness Exploit. So penetrates the target's defense by an additional 30% when attacking an enemy under a dot effect. And most of the summoners have dots. Uh, Kina has very easy access to dots. Uh, Cleave has access to dots from units like uh, his second skill or his third skill. I believe Orbia has quite a few dots. I don't quite recall Solata. I think her Wind Element does. Which, keep in mind, Wind Element is the best element for uh, damage. Because the third skill will do the most boost. And it is way better than the light one, actually. But yeah, uh, this is uh, what the damage looks like in all of those conditions. So first of all, we are testing Nadin Ha's damage, and we're testing her damage with uh, the CC effect increasing artifact. So the one that does 10% more damage if there is a CC effect, and we're gonna look at her damage in just a second. Okay, and this is where I launched the second skill of Nadin Ha, so we currently have a debuffs, I made sure that we have some defense breaks, I made sure that we have the damage taken up from Perna and the crit damage taken up from Cleave's skill 2. Uh, there is also a provoke which will boost uh, the damage by 10% and uh, the damage from her ability as you can see is around 200,000 per hit. I'm gonna denote the uh, small variation due to the different levels of uh, defense breaks, so yeah. 
200,000 times 3, that's essentially 600,000 damage with 8 debuffs, or was it that 7 debuffs, which are easily available solo. As you can see, this is pretty much the solo team that I would use. Uh, Huahi gives a defense break and oppression. Uh, Fire Cleaves gives a total of 4 debuffs, which is bleed. Burn the damage taken up and provoke. Uh, for other summoners, might be less. And Perna also gives uh, damage taken up and even undeviable. I don't quite recall if it lands on bosses, but yeah. So, Naninha, 600k damage, and we'll actually note it down right here. So, uh, for Naninha, one skill use 600k. Then uh, we will test out Perna with the same exact runes. Okay, and here is Perna uh, getting ready to use her second skill. So in here we have 7 debuffs, uh, we have the crit damage taken up and uh, the damage taken up. We also have level 2 defense break which is a few percent lower uh, than the level 4 defense break but that wouldn't uh, modify the damage probably by like more than a few percent so it's definitely not as game breaking as it would be but yeah uh, because Perna doesn't care about the amount of harmful effects it's pretty much the same conditions apart from uh, having level 2 defense break instead of level 4. And the damage she does is uh, 213,000. Now keep in mind, if it attacked a boss creature, uh, it would do a double hit. So this uh, damage would be doubled essentially. And uh, 2 times 214k is a total of 428k. And now, oh whoops, I uh, wrote in the wrong turn. There we go. And now the last thing left to test is Nadinha with the Weakness Exploit Artifact, which actually adds 30% defense penetration when there is a dot. And as you can see, we always have a dot. And there we go. So Nadinha is getting ready to use her skill. She has the same runes as Perna in the previous one and Nadinha in the very first test. Uh, there are again 8 debuffs in total, there is the crit damage taken up, there is the damage taken up, a level 2 defense break this time instead of level 4, so... Uh, technically, if the artifact was the same, she would do a tiny bit less damage, right? There's also a burn to trigger that artifact. And prepare for this, my friends. So, that was 225, 233, and 233. So, we're gonna round it up in the middle of all of those three, and we're gonna track it as 230,000. So, on average, all three hits did around 690,000 damage. Now, uh, you might be saying, wait, um, Perna does less damage, right? But maybe it would be a bit better than Argen. Unfortunately, Argen does have even higher multiplier slightly than Nadinha. So uh, Argen's damage is very comparable to this pretty much. And it will still have damage Argen. Another bad thing is, even though the damage is close... Uh, you have to not forget one fact. So, first of all, if we go to the A uh, again, or not again, but Nanha, 3 mana. And for Perna, this is a 4 mana skill. So, again, if we adjusted for the equal amount of mana, uh, we would essentially need to lower this damage by another 25%, which would keep uh, Perna in a very rough spot, having actually almost more than double less damage than a Nadinha does. So yeah, and uh, for science, I also tested it in less optimal conditions. So let's say, again, uh, this means that Argens and Nadinha's damage works very well when there's a lot of debuffs, right? What if you only have a defense break? Or maybe a defense break and one or two more effects, right? So... Uh, for the final test, I did three effects. I mean, I'm sorry if you feel like this is not feasible, but with a summoner and three monsters, you are definitely able to get three harmful effects of some sort. So uh, there is no excuse for it. And yeah, let's compare the damage between Perna and Nadinha with just a few harmful effects. Okay, so this is the conditions we're testing it at. Uh, Galleon's defense break and attack buff from the second skill. So level 1 attack buff, level 1 defense break, and one single use of cleaves uh, skill 2, which allows you to add uh, crit damage taken up as well as a burn, right? So this will proc the 
defense penetration effect from Nadin Has artifact, which will make it a little bit more equal, right? And for Perna, this is the damage that it does. So one single uh, skill to hit will do a total of 165,000. Now, keep in mind that because she also applies damage taken up, if you do not have any other unit, which in most cases you will, uh, that damage from another use will also be boosted. So as you can see, 207,000. We'll go for that uh, because I feel like if you do spam Perna's uh, skill too, that's the damage you will be looking at pretty much. And yeah, so it's going to be very similar to what it was here because she doesn't actually scale uh, with debuffs. So it's pretty much identical and you can take the same value pretty much based on uh, the testing we did previously, right? Now, our goal is to test out the Nadinha and see how much her damage uh, changes based on that. So Nadinha's damage, again, uh, same conditions. Galleon, attack break and defense break from skill 2. A single use of Cleave's skill 2. And uh, this is the damage that Nadinha deals. So a single triple hit of uh, her skill 3 will do 3 times 116k. So... Three times that is exactly 348k. Okay, minor technical difficulties later. We got it. So we attack. Skill 2, we let that land. And third skill, 94k times 3. So here's the total results pretty much. I'm gonna zoom in it a bit. So here's the deal. If you are, first of all, playing a team raid, for example, in a duo or a trio, you will have plenty of harmful effects. You will have like four more. Nadinha and Argen will still be way, 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 way more superior picks in terms of damage. However, if you are playing solo and you are really, really struggling with uh, landing those harmful effects, as you can see in here, we tested with three harmful effects, uh, one of them being a damage increasing one. Nadinha was able to do 282k. This is what you can expect for Argen as well. With a defense penetration artifact, she did 348k, but that's purely because that artifact is insane. And Perna did 414k. Now keep in mind, because this is a 4 mana skill compared to Nadinha's 3 mana skill, right? If we adjusted this damage based on mana, or basically based per mana, right? Uh, for one mana, this skill would be doing around 116k damage. Whereas Perna's skill 2, even when there is damage taken up, which I'm not even counting from here, right? Because if uh, Perna was your secondary damage dealer, he will apply it and Nadinha will be able to do way more damage than this. Even then, adjusted for the mana cost, you are looking just over... What is it like? Yeah, uh, around that, I'm gonna round it up to 104k per one mana, right? So j just to make it clear, per one mana. So yeah, um, the conclusion is Perna is an amazing unit, but it is not better than Nadinha. And in most cases, it is not better than uh, Argen even if you do not have a blue artifact. Like, if you do have the weakness exploit blue artifact, uh, I'm talking about this one, and you have a monster or a summoner that can apply a dot, I mean, Nadinha herself applies a dot on that. Nadinha is the superior DPS unit, and it's not even close, even on a low amount of debuffs, and if you are able to stack debuffs, she's way better. She's almost two times better, because keep in mind, this is not adjusted for mana as well. This is a 4 mana skill, this is a 3 mana skill. So yeah, there we go. We did some testing, we did some PvP testing. We will do, be doing uh, PvP testing as well. But yeah, that's about it for PvE. Uh, Perna, use her, but don't use her as a main DPS unit unless you are doing seal. Yeah, that's it and peace.